So I am here with my tall friend, Joe Biscalia. We are standing in the hallway and Shaq Lawson walks by. He looks into the camera. He goes, duck, duck, goose. The Bills are heading to the playoffs for the second time in three years. Joe, they got it done on defense. I guess just general thoughts about the game. Well, it was going to be a slog because this... Slog? Yeah. Sl slog. It's like... In Scrabble, that would do well. Trying to trudge through a muddy water. You and your vocabulary. Um, <laughs> this Steelers defense is legit, and that's, that's the point of this whole thing. I mean, they, from front to back, they play all together. Mm -hmm. They have talent on all three levels, and that's difficult to attack. But I kept saying throughout the week that this is a defense that's, you know, that could contend if it had something better than Duck Hodges playing quarterback. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, Duck Hodges is what ultimately prevented them from winning this game. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a fresh five turnovers, not really going to get the job done. But to the Bills' credit, they took advantage of those opportunities. I mean, Tredavious White was Johnny on the spot today. Yeah. I mean, he was he was outstanding. Jordan Poyer picked off a pass in the end zone. Levi Wallace picked off yep. a pass to, to shore things up. I mean, this is a secondary that I kind of thought about it this way because they haven't gotten a lot of interceptions, but a positive regression for them because – you, you just knew it was going to come one one game or another. I mean, Tremaine Edmonds had that one last week, and it still seemed like they were kind of close to really the, the water just break, breaking right through the dam. And that's what happened today. All you needed was a duck. Wow. Look at him. That was so good. Thank you. I'm really impressed by that. So we, I'm not going to be able to live that down. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm yeah. going to post that on Twitter. Uh, so, we, we, so we knew how good the Steelers' defense was. We also knew that the Bills' defense was great. Did this game tell us anything we didn't know about the Bills, or does it just kind of hammer home the fact that, you know, this defense is going to carry them however far it can? I mean, yeah, that's, that's what they are right now. They're a team with a young quarterback that's still learning mm -hmm. as he goes with some encouraging pieces around him i.e. Devin Singletary, John Brown, John Brown making a huge catch, mm -hmm. um, Cole Beasley when he's not tipping passes up into defenders' hands. Can I say something about that real quick? Sorry uh, to cut you off. That was completely not on Josh Allen. That's just my opinion. Oh, I disagree. Whoa! I, I, okay. I, think, I think it was a little bit of both because the throw was high and Beasley should have caught it. Yeah, I think the throw was a little if, high. If the throw is doesn't make Cole Beasley jump, then, I mean, he's kind of a shorter guy. Yeah, but don't you see a little bit of alligator arms and they just kind of pull down because you hear the footsteps on that? I mean, his arms were fully extended. I, so our buddy Dan Fates over from Wham in Rochester posted a screen grab mm -hmm. of the play, and it looked like Cole Beasley was probably about a foot off the ground. Yeah. It also, it, to me, it looked like the jump was timed. It doesn't matter because the Bills won, <laughs> ultimately. Sorry to cut you off from your train of thought, but we go in the locker room after the game. He's used to me cutting him off. We go into the <laughs> locker room after the game, and it was kind of the same thing from everybody. This yeah. feels very different from when they made the playoffs a couple of years ago sure. because they expected to get there. I don't know if everybody else expected them to get there. Can this team win a game or more once they get to the playoffs? I don't think more. I think they can win a game. Now that they are locked into the five seed at worst, um, that means they're probably getting the AFC South winners. So probably Houston or Houston Tennessee. Houston or Tennessee. And I know there are some illusions of grandeur that, that maybe the Bills can take home the division. But you need the, Dol you need the Dolphins to beat the Patriots in the final week of the season. Yeah. So not exactly great. What I think will... Fitz magic, though, baby. It, I mean, you never know. You never know. It, things, things can get weird when Ryan Fitzpatrick's involved. But... I think for them, I, they absolutely can walk into Houston because I agree. not only is this a really good defense that can probably give most quarterbacks fits the way that they did to Lamar Jackson last week, yep. Tom Brady in week four. I mean, it's not as though... Duck Hodges in week 15. Duck Hodges in week 15, it happened. But it's not as though they're, they, they can't shut down or at least limit what a guy like Deshaun Watson can do. I think... The, the real part of this is you look at this, this team is better on the road than they are at home. Yeah. It's it's almost six and one now. It's almost interesting. They're 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 six and one. I don't know if they're gonna go into New England and win next week. I, I would probably doubt it, just just based on, you know, track record, New England being really good at home. Mm -hmm. Um but getting six wins at, at on the road is a huge accomplishment and it really speaks to the type of team that they have, the shutdown type of defense that they that they have. The, the most impressive part to me, I mean, the turnovers were, were great today, but 
stopping the run game the way that they did in the first half, they took that completely away yeah. from the Steelers. I mean, outside of the, the first... The first run of the game. The first 15-yard gain. Here's a stat for you. The first 15-yard gain from uh, James Conner, including that, running backs rush nine, nine times for 21 yards. That's a yards per carry of about 2.333 repeating. Okay. okay? About. Uh, without that 15-yard, after that play, they gained six yards on eight carries wow. for 0.75 yards per carry the rest of the first half. Yeah. That's that's dominant. It took away what they wanted to do, and it helped them win the half. And from that point forward, they had to come back and win the second half after Pittsburgh took the lead. But even still, this is a, that was a, a great dominant effort by this defense, and it leads you to believe that they can do some things in the playoffs given the right opponent. To me, and this is just my opinion, it feels like they're maybe a year ahead of schedule. It feels like if this would have happened next year, maybe it wouldn't have surprised as many people, at least outside of the organization. You spent so much time preparing for the draft and looking at the offseason and all those things. And I know we're still in the season now. Yep. But does it feel like to you they are building a team that is taking the right steps and becoming not just a team that can maybe get into the playoffs, but maybe eventually a contender? Well, I mean, that's what they're building toward. And all this is doing this year is building expectations yes. next year. I mean, if they were to get close to the playoffs and not make it, a year like they had that they're having this year would have been considered great yes. for next year. Now, what they're doing this year won't be good enough next year mm -hmm. because at that point Josh Allen will be in his third year yep. and I know we're still a year away from this but this is their general progression that they even thought about 2020 has always been the year to them always that's what they've been building toward it's when the guys that they've been drafting the guys that they've been signing really buy into the system and, and have been in the system for a long time that's when they start to re-sign some of their own guys Tredavious White still they can get him on a fifth year option but like Matt Milano Deion Dawkins these types of guys the the cornerstones of your draft classes that you want to bring in and you want to bring back and and pay and and give uh, give some positivity to because of how they perform for you in a season as as this one but make no mistake, this was never about 2019. 2019 is great, and they're going to take it, and they're going to take it as a learning experience and move on from it. But 2020 was the year where they really thought to themselves, okay, that's 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 going to be the year where if they're going to make a jump, that's, that's going to be it. So they made a jump this year. Now, from that point forward, progress. And that's going to be the biggest challenge to becoming a contender. And that's all on Josh Allen, too. I mean, Josh Allen, what he did today was good enough. Mm -hmm. Is what he did today going to be good enough forever to be a contender? It's not. It's not. So that's where he has to take the next step. So what he's doing is great. He is progressing in a lot of areas that he needs to. He still needs to get better in a lot of areas, like getting rid of the ball quickly. But that being said, he and the Bills, I wouldn't say ahead of schedule. It's just a pleasant surprise that it happened in 2019. But now... The target's on in 2020. Yeah. I mean, Bills fans aren't going to be willing to settle for wild card birth and out. Yeah. I mean, this is it, it's setting up for being a contender in 2020. Don't think about that yet. Just enjoy the win. The Bills are going to the playoffs. I enjoyed this talk, Joe. <laughs> Joe Biscalia, he's going to have plenty on The Athletic coming up, and also you're taping your new podcast episode uh, soon? Yeah, yeah, probably sometime before 2 a.m. Yeah, it's pretty late here. Joe, Matt, thanks for watching.